Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. It's the first video of 2023. I forgot what year it was there. So, saying it's the first video of the year, I'm going to keep this pretty casual and just speed through this thing that's been sort of hanging over my head since I got back from holiday. Yeah, this, this hairdryer has taken uh, quite a lot longer than I thought it might do. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I've modelled the main form. I'm not going to bother with the, the dial here and the uh, flex coming out the bottom of the handle and stuff like that because the idea of um, most of my videos is, you know, main form sort of thing. So here's the result. So I'm using my new Zebra Stripe uh, HDR image because I got sick of looking at the stripes. Generated that in HDR Light Studio. If anybody uses that for rendering, very good. The reason I decided to model this hairdryer is I sort of lurk in the background over on the Rhino forums a bit and some of these older products have been popping up, people have been uh, modelling them as surfacing challenges and then someone uploaded the uploaded some, some quite good scans of uh, some of these older products. So I'll just pop over to that forum so we can uh, give credit where it's due. So here we go, the 70 surfacing challenge. So uh, Kevin Franz over on the Rhino forum was kind enough to upload some of these scans. Uh, so I've used those. Uh, set for educational uses only. So I figure me modelling this and putting it online is educational. So we're all good. Okay, so I might just sort of spin the model around a bit. I've turned the mesh down a bit for previewing just because once I got this pattern on here it was a bit slow. I'll just roll back through the model like normal um, and just cover a few things. Okay, so I'm going to roll back to the beginning of the model so there's nothing and just show. So this is the, uh, the imported scan. So I've tried to get fairly close to it. Um, some areas I haven't, I haven't been too worried about matching dead on exactly to uh, some of the surface form going on through the main blend area but yeah close enough and I was sort of had an eye on trying to get a, a a good flow surface flow so I wasn't too concerned about matching that um, so I'm going to hide the scan now and just sort of explain what we've done so I've uh, created a, a plane instead of working on a center plane which is the right I've created this split rebate offset plane because there's quite a large um, gap between the um, left and right housings as you can see so I've decided uh, to make a few assumptions was that we've got 0.5 degrees draft um, so I've included that in my setup and a one millimeter the gap between rebate between the left and right parts that's that rebate split offset created a side elevation control captured some main dimensions there the center of the blower uh, the outlet and the handle blower center because the blower is uh, like a and uh, sort of egg form compared to the circular uh, grill on the side And then I've created a whole lot of sections uh, to create this main blower surface. Uh, and quite a few of these sections were, I came back and added another section because I needed to um, add a little bit of twist or something to the surface here to get the blend to work better uh, further down the tree. So as you can see there's quite a few sections in there. And then I've got a copy of that. I'll explain why later. And we go down here. I've got the outlet set, outlet section, um, which is an arc with, and because it's offset from the center plane, it's this is the uh, resultant draft angle. So it's got more than my 0.5 running along there. And then I've gone down, and made the handle, which has got. There's two different sections on each end, and that's the boundary surface. And I've extended that surface up. So I've had a look at the curvature. Sometimes extensions can uh, have an abrupt change of curvature, but this is all right. And then the reason I've extended it is because I want to trim it back. So 
after much toing and froing and trying to chop out this whole area and make one big blend, I uh, decided to treat the blend between the handle and the blower and the outlet of the blower, uh, treat them as two separate exercises. And then once I had the handle um, blended into the blower and then the outlet blended into the blower, we could chop this piece out and um, worry about the, the blend in between everything. So that was quite a good way to do it rather than just overcomplicating things and and too much guesswork about where surfaces should be and, and, and what the curvature should be to get a good flow across this area. So what have we got here? We've just got some sections. Okay, so I'm keeping, um, I've set like a, 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 a boundary down from the top edge here where I don't want to go above this area because I want to keep a piece of surface there to to infer tangency from for any surfaces that are matching up there. Um, okay, so I've got two copies of this blower surface because one's going to be used for the outlet and one's for the handle, so I was just showing the wrong one. Okay, so I'm going to blend between here and here. Voila. Okay, uh, there's all sorts of things going on here. Um, I have multiple sections in the surface, as you can see, running in this direction. So I've got three, but I've also because I was having trouble getting, uh, there was like an undercut on this side, I've added another section through here as well, which I wouldn't normally do, but it actually ended up uh, creating not too bad a result. So if I turn on my, my zebra, my blob, um, it's quite fluid um, flowing between there. If I just use the... Uh, my normal zebra as well. As you can see, um, that all flows together quite well. And I've got my 0.5 degrees draft. Okay, so that's one, that's the blend between the handle and the blower. Now I repeat the same exercise except between the outlet and the blower. So I will just hide a few things. Okay, so similar sort of thing. Uh, except I don't need to add in a section down the middle of this one. Um, so we've got three sections uh, in the middle defining the, the, the curvature and uh, those are dimensioned. So uh, if you watch any of my other videos um, making a curvature continuous surface here, the these um, sections are all one we edit one. Those sections are all Style splines and uh, degree five, so they've got six CVs, uh, and then I've curved a continuous reference to each of these intersection curves through the surfaces on each end, and dimensioned those. And then I pretty much using having instant three D on uh, with my zebra stripes, and basically tweak these in real time. Uh, to sort of uh, get the zebra working a bit better. Okay, so I'll skip ahead. Now we need to integrate these um, two forms together. Okay, so I've got two copies of this blower surface, except with different trims on them, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I trim, um, trim them, so I end up with uh, this half and then this half, if that makes sense. I've trimmed them down the middle and then I knit them together and when I knit them together using merge entities that gets, because they're the same originating surface, uh, that gets rid of this um, split, which is really nice. So, so now I've got two nice blends, now I've only got to focus on this area here. Um, so yeah, definitely a good way to do it rather than trying to build a surface here and then guess what this this piece and this piece in here needs to look like or what this curvature needs to be to attain a nice uh, blend in here. So next step I decided to trim out these areas. Uh, there's some sketches there you can go and have a look. I'll put the model online and knit it together and then trim this area out. And now what I've done is I've created this, uh, use the fill surface, the old nasty fill surface. Um, so the idea 
is because this is a one, two, three, four, five, six sided boundary, I just wanted to check that everything was sort of flowing okay to uh, produce a, a um, good result before I bothered trying to come in here and divide this into um, four sided surfaces. So that's actually pretty good with the fill surface. Um, some deviation, as you can see there with the step, uh, deviation and tangency, but so I thought, okay, I'm confident enough to go ahead and try and figure out how to build something. So what I did was build this large mid blend. Um, the surface is overbuilt. I'm going to trim it back, um, trim out these big side areas. And basically, just um, I'll show you. Okay, so you can see what's happened there. I've trimmed a piece off. I'm going to build a four side surface there. So again, this has got three sections, and these numbers here, I sort of played around with extensively once I trimmed it back and added these two other blends on each side just to um, add relief or relax the surface or whatever when needed. Okay, so there's the lower final blend and again that's got sections across it but in this case these sketches are uh, equal, equal length relationship on the control polygon rather than dimensioning them. Um, because as you can see, they're, they're fairly well, there's no inflections or anything like that. They're fairly well um, consistent curve across that spline because I mucked around with uh, these these splines controlling the surface. Okay, and then same down this end, trim it out, add a surface, knit it all together. So that's the that's the body of work. That's the that was the um, time consuming part. And as you can see, this is version 19. I tried a number of things. I don't think I'll bother going into that in this video. Um, so there's, it. there's my zebra plot. Uh, and no fill surfaces used in here. So there's a few little wiggles and um, inconsistencies. But yeah, I've got to move on with uh, my life. <laughs> I've got, probably got work starting next week. So best to get this online. Okay, and what's next is basically creating planar. Oh no, actually, I've got to finish off the end of the handle down here. So there's this flare on the end of the handle, which is a loft, and then a boundary surface on the underside. And then I basically create some planar faces to turn this into a watertight body, and then thicken it, and Add a cut here and shell it out. Shelled out fine. And what else have we got? Oh yeah, revolve the outlet and some cuts. And then the grill up here. And a whole pile of fillets. And added a lip to cover the gap between the two, the left and right housings. So as I said, it's incomplete because it doesn't it doesn't have this knob on the side. Um, but the aim of this project was not to uh, get stuck putting patterns around a, uh, a circular object. It was to um, get this um, multi-way blend sort of thing going on. So if I turn my zebras on and have another look at that. I'm fairly happy with that. Let's make this look a little bit simpler from a visual point of view. Yeah. So if you just follow this highlight round, sort of splits off, runs down the outlet, and then equally this blend coming round, which gets quite sharp in here, um, which then opens up again through here, and then becomes sort of a uh, flatter. And then this big blend through here. So yeah, fairly, fairly happy with the result. Um, yeah, so I shall put this file in the description. If anybody wants to pick it apart. Um, again, apologies. Beginning of the year, I couldn't really. Um, I ran out of energy to go and name all the features. Um, and there might be a few uh, zombie features in there that don't do anything. 
But yeah, I might try another retro uh, product in my next uh, video because I've definitely got some surfacing challenges. Um, yeah, so keep your eyes out. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. See ya.